Hello and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and I'm very happy to be back in the hot seat with a seriously good show today. From less worthy designer fashion to a fab makeup look plus wellness and health inspiration and some good old fashioned chat too. Later, watch what happened when Lou and I visited one of London's most beautiful stores and tried on pretty much all the items on our wish list. If you need some ideas for what to wear this autumn winter, we have them all. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and to mark our last show of the month, Georgie met with two women who are aiding the fight and treatment of the disease. Dr. Melissa Phillips, a consultant oncologist at St. Bart's Hospital, and Kelly McCabe, founder of Percy Health, a virtual care clinic designed to support people living post-cancer. They break down everything from what to look for through to how to support a loved one affected by it. It is really powerful stuff. Then we follow Sherlux's wellness editor tour around for a day to see what she gets up to. And finally, influencer and makeup guru Emma Roberts creates a flawless makeup look for us to copy at home. But first, it's panel chat with the team. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. With Lou Tor and Sherry. You might not know. You'll know from behind the scenes. But Sherry, it's so nice to have you here on the sofa with us. I know. It's so nice to be here. You're welcome. Um, we're going to start by talking about IKEA, who have taken over the Topshop Oxford Circus location it, there's been a lot of speculation about who might take over that you know that fabled institution and it is going to be ikea with a city location i think it's their first london city location it must be what do we think i mean would you go to ikea in a city no i i just feel like when you go to ikea you go to buy loads of things mm. and also i think you go and then you come out with things you didn't even realize that you needed and you come out with one of these big trolleys so the thought of like coming out and then being faced with oxford circus with all of that mm. makes me feel anxious i completely agree it could be quite a good place that if you do live in london and you can't go click and collect from one of the other stores mm. you know if you're either going to hire a car or drive there i agree it's not most doesn't not most obvious process yeah. Yeah. So you, can't, um, you can't like there's no parking and you can't pull up outside. That's so yeah. true. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe they'll make something in the back. No, I've, no they said that there actively won't be parking. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good way of getting things home. And I'm just sad that Topshop isn't there anymore. I know. No, I mean, it's a massive space. Like, they'll, it'll be yeah. huge, a huge Ikea. And you sort of hope they would replace it with, like, another kind of beloved fashion institution. Yeah. Not, I like, no offence, Ikea, but, you know, it doesn't exactly, like, thrill yeah. me. Yeah. No. Um, I have still never been to an Ikea. What? what? Hang on. I thought it. Been. the other day. No. When you, when you moved in and you needed to get some like temporary... I bought some bit... No, not from this place. Yeah, it, back in, earlier in the year when I okay. when we rented a place, I bought some bits from Ikea, but I just bought them online. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. so I have transactions. Yeah, well, yeah, you're yeah. going to have to break this break, break this virginity. Virginity. Well, this is quite nice for me because if, like me, you can't really be bothered to like go out to one of those retail mm. outlets and, yeah. you know, faff with buying a load of furniture, yeah. at least... Yeah. Yeah. It's like on it. my doorstep. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, we thought we would, uh, well, well, I didn't. I'm excluding myself from this. I don't have anything. <laughs> but what, what are your guys' um, top IKEA picks? I was, you all reply so speedily on this. Everyone's got real <laughs> IKEA favorites. Like, yours, is, yours is probably the least chic. Let's start with yours. <laughs> I'm interested. I mean, I don't think anything from IKEA is that chic. I disagree. Anyway. Tor and Sherry have actually found some quite chic things okay, from IKEA. Okay, okay. Apologies. <laughs> um, mine is sandwich bags. Um, I'm really annoyed I forgot to bring them in with me. <laughs> and obviously, I know that you can get sandwich bags elsewhere, pretty yeah. much like every other supermarket. Mm. But the IKEA ones are just such a good size. There's like a, there's, so this size, and then there's like a this size, and it's perfect for... Are me. they like a, a clip and lock, or there's like a, the one, like a, um, a normal, like a... <laughs> I don't know. Slider. It's like a slider. Yeah, no, but not like a slider, it's oh. like a, like you kind of go like that. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 I like those um, ones. Sorry, but, but do you go all the way to a retail park no I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't but that like my mum will often like she goes she lives in Bristol and she she'll one, pick you up can, some right so she always messaged me I don't know once a month so I'm going to okay is there anything you need and I'm like sandwich bags okay um but it's great for you know onions lemons <laughs> good <laughs> snacks great mm -hmm. it's very useful, useful. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what's your I like actually your had a massive Ikea shop about couple of months ago because yeah. I needed to get some bits for the house and I like I was in my um, I was so in the mood you know when you're in the mood you mm. just yeah. go nuts and one of the things I bought was a really nice rug I needed a rug oh, yeah. and they have a really good range of rugs that are very very affordable I bought a rug it was 55 pounds so if this time next year I don't like it I can you know sell, sell it or whatever it, yeah. um but it's really nice kind of like gray and white I'm sure it'll come up on the screen um like 50, 50 quid yeah, for a nice rug yeah, um and also a really nice vase that was eight pounds that's pale pink again like it's really nice you vase. know Eight pounds, mm. like, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah. No. It's always those things, actually, that take you by surprise. And that's, I think, when you then are walking around, you're like, yes. ooh, that. Ooh, exactly, that. exactly. And there were several other things as well. I could have sent you a lot of items. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I um, think Georgie and Laura's haul actually in Ikea is like one of our most viewed videos. I think it yeah. is. Yeah. Maybe time. it's time to update that. It was a few years yeah. ago. Maybe yeah. I should go. Yes. Um, Sherry, yours is, I was so surprised that this was Ikea. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. They're really nice champagne glasses. I think if you don't want to go to like Soho Home or get really expensive cut crystal. They are like just like the Soho Home yeah. ones. Right? Yeah. They look really good. Yeah. Really affordable as well. Very classy. Oh wow. Looking for a cocktail, you know, Friday night. Yeah, so mm. nice. Yeah, yeah, I love and them. And also really nice. I mean, the Soho Home ones to get like six will set you yeah. up. So yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, Okay, we, um, we, this is an eclectic mix today, um, but since we have Sherry on the sofa, we have to talk about eyebrows. Sherry, you sort of inspired this piece of content on the Sheer Lux <laughs> site. Um, we rounded up the team's favorite eyebrow products. Can I just tell you, I sent my con contribution to Becky and she was like, no, I'm sorry, you only have one product. Yeah, I did and this, too. Uh, we, were you allowed in it? No. Right, well, anyway, this is, <laughs> this is a piece of content for people who use multiple products on their brow. And anyway, it was just really enlightening to me. I just assumed that everybody used like, yeah. one thing. Same so here. Sherry, you have the most fantastic brows. So <laughs> can you. you please talk us through your preferred products? So yeah, I really love the Anastasia Beverly Hills um, eyebrow pencil. The nib is really fine, so you can like um, almost like mimic fake hairs, which is really good. Yeah. And then my favourite has to be the Beauty Pie, the Spoolie. It's so good. It's better than anyone I've tried, in my opinion. Mm. Better than Boy Brow, better than Elf. It's honestly so good. It's really nourishing. Is it a liquid like like a Boy Brow? Like it holds yeah. it in place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost like um, like mascara like texture. Mm. Um, and it just keeps your eyebrows in place all day. I've got it on today. Yeah. I literally. Whereby you are the best, so yeah. the best brows. And do you, have you like what do you do? Do you have them threaded, or are they just naturally like that? No. So I'm quite lucky in that I have three older sisters who are very much like don't touch your eyebrows. Mm. Don't pluck them, just leave them. So I've always left them. Always. Yeah. Oh. I don't trust anyone. I've mm. had them threaded once and never again. They go too wow. thin for me, so I just leave but them. But you don't get wow. hairs growing. Like you don't. Get, yeah. I I, just I pluck, pluck them myself yeah. a little bit, okay. but I just kind of leave them and I tint them every probably three to four weeks okay. with the Isla eyebrow tint, which again is incredible. So you, do it for, you do it yourself? Do it myself, like yeah. Georgia, yeah. Even though I've got really dark hair, I find that it just picks up every tiny yeah, one yeah. that you don't notice. Yeah. And when you use the beauty brow, has that got a colour or is that a clear one? Yeah, it has, it's got colour. So okay. I have like a dark, dark brown one. Um, and it's just so good. I tried it and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're so lucky. I, I mean, I, I I feel like my mum probably told me not to pluck my eyebrows, but then the trend was thin, so she went thin as well. Yeah. And like I've just but your brows are so yeah, thick really at the good. moment. But it's entirely pencil. It's entire. I use so I'll talk about mine. I use a Charlotte Tilbury brush. It's like one end is a brush and one end is a pencil, mm -hmm. and so I brush them up and I pencil them in. But but naturally, they, I, I would that's the thing I would never leave the house without because okay. they look. I mean, they they end about like here. Really? Yeah. They look. You would never know. know. I'll, I'll come closer afterwards. And I'll come closer <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's so I really really rate the Charlotte Tilbury mm. pencil because um, I need the thicker one. I've used that Anastasia one. It's really mm -hmm. good for the little bits, but mm -hmm. the thicker one mm -hmm. helps create the, okay. the length. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lou, what do you use? You've got great brows too. Um, uh, yeah, I'm very low maintenance. Again, I wasn't allowed in the feature because I only <laughs> use one product. Um, but when I was younger, I remember a makeup artist like really telling me off about my brows and was like, you need to retrain them. Like They're so uneven. Retrain. I was like, oh God. Um, so I use the um, Glossier Boy Brow. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried some other ones, but I personally find when there's... Like the spo spoolie? No, the, what's it called? Yeah, the spoolie. Yeah. When it gathers too much product, they then just look so dark. And mm -hmm. I feel like my face just then looks so severe with too dark mm -hmm. a brow. Like I tried the, the rose ink one actually the other day and I was just like, oh my God, I can't see anything but my brows. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's something it's, you I hate that feeling. Like, yeah. yeah. But, um, and also like I can, I, I had this conversation with my husband the other day. I can see my eyebrows like in my peripheral. Can you? Can you? <laughs> no. No, I definitely Oh, hang not. on. Yeah, if I frown. If I frown. No, I can't really. I no. definitely can't, no. It must so, be a face shape thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it must be my shape. But, um, so again, like, anything too like heavy. You makes, couldn't use distraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I need, the, the Glossier one like has just the mat, right amount of product on the end. Mm -hmm. Some of the others mm -hmm. have done a bit too much. Okay, noted. Tor? I, I'm so low maintenance on my brows. I, I, apart from threading, but I haven't done that for quite a while. I probably get them threaded every couple of months. Mm. And that's like my, I say that's like what I do. Yours is like a really nice tidy shape. Yeah. Mm. But I don't, there's nothing on them now. I don't, on, really? Yeah, on, I, I might put so something lucky. on them like once a month. If I'm like going out, or something. so lucky. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I'm not the But they're like, you're like you, I, I hate any color on them. And yeah. every time I get them threaded, they're like, oh, do you think you should tint them? I was like, mm -hmm. no, because 
every time I've done it, I, I just I feel so, so dark. Yeah. It's really, and my face looks just looks off. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I like particularly blonde, I I actually really like going quite dark on the eyebrow. I thought yeah. like mm. I don't look like Cara Delevingne, but it's, I, yeah, 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 I think yeah. It's, quite, it's that yeah. kind of look. Yeah. But I guess it's just what you're used to. Yeah. yeah. But the one product I have found that is really good is the Blink. It's kind of a two-ended thing. Oh, but I the, that. I've heard that's really But the good. other yeah. one, it's not a spoolie, it's like a mini um, kabuki brush. Mm. So it's like you can like buff it and they make Ooh. make something really like Ooh. groomed yeah. and nice. So that's my one. And the I use chai, the shade. It's just just I think that's exactly what I used before. Chai, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Chai. Yeah. Now I go darker, but yeah. Yeah. Really nice. yeah. Oh my god. I this... think a brush is key, I think, especially in winter where you're mm -hmm. like, you know, on and off with a jumper. Yeah. And they can kind of go a bit all over. I really notice that that when I get dressed, I have to go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> we literally talk about eyebrows all day. Well, if you do want to see the feature that we're not in, <laughs> then do check out all the really good recommendations um, on site. Um finally, we thought we had to end by chatting about dating shows. There is a new show on channel four called the Love Trap. Did you guys watch the trailer for this? Oh my God, I saw mm. it on my Gogglebox. Um, yeah. Oh, was it, start it started, hasn't yeah. it? Okay, so this is basically a TV show in which there's, well, it's a bit like The Bachelor, right? Like there's yeah. one guy, there's six, there's, sorry, 12 Who girls. Who was in Too Hot to Handle? Well, I know his face. <laughs> yeah, same. Like oh, but I was like, do I know him? Like, That's this is exactly friend. what I thought. I was like, do, do we have friends in the Yeah. 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 I mean, you, you recognize someone. I was like, yeah. do I, how do I know this guy? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. What is his name? Is he the one that didn't last very long on Too Hot to I can't remember. He's, like, like, he's absolutely huge. Yeah. yeah. He's like, a tank. Like quite, yeah, he's a unit. Mm. Oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, but yeah, that's oh, what Right, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, so then there are 12 girls, six of whom are there to find love, six of whom are in relationships and are just there for the cash, and he has to work out which is which, come to the conclusion, you know, find one girl in the end, like yeah. all of them, and hopefully she won't just be it's in It's kind it of like money. playing it straight as well. Do you remember that? Yeah. That rings a bell. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. and then also I think the title, The Love Trap, is because they literally fall through trap yeah. doors when he makes them. I was just like, what, what, what is this? Like, <laughs> we've just gone, it's just got so silly. Well, yeah. this is the question. Too far. Have, have we reached peak dating show? Show, is this the kind of thing you would watch? Um, probably, yes. Yeah. With my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but same as you, Leo, I saw a little bit on Gogglebox and I audibly gasped when they fell yeah. through the trap door because <laughs> yeah. I thought it would be, you know, a small, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. but no, it's like, boom, down. I was like, wow, this is savage. Yeah, brutal. Yeah. It's really brutal. It's really brutal. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I feel like the format, again, this guy, he's clearly on it. You know, he's not clear, you know, there to find love, is he? Yeah. He's there for, right. you know, the show. get a bit of a name, exactly. Mm. So, yeah, I feel like it's good watching, but yeah. not for, you know, if you want proper romance. Mm. There's also a new one that I think um, that Jamie from... Oh, the dancing one. Yeah, mm. um, where it's like a group of dancers who are all living together and then I think they like go on dates and then... The, but they, they perform as well. Yeah. I think it's like Strictly Meets Love Island. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm more into that. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think that looks awful. Yeah, the trapdoor is weird. I mean, Too Hot to Handle for me was actually quite good. Yeah. Um, because it's slick, it's cool, it's like believable. Slick. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I agree, it's slick. The editing is slick. Yeah, yeah. 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 As in you don't have to just sit and it, like it's Love Island. Like, oh like my it's, god, another episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. I think it's slick, and it looks like nice. Whereas mm -hmm. he's like basic budget, like falls for a whole <laughs> shit. I'm like, what is this? Switch over. It's yeah. so true. No time um, for that. Also, don't you think it's all just you know? It's a bit like Love Island now. You watch it and you know that people aren't in it for the right reasons. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I think back in the early days of these shows you know, whether it was true or not, at least you felt like they were genuine. Whereas now, like, as if they're there to find love. And I've never really got that format, like the Bachelor format as well, where it's like, all these people just like, fall in love with this guy. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, that makes no sense. Him. Yeah. That's also, like, I guess in like, his instance, like, he, yes, he's deciding who's got a girlfriend, or sorry, who's taken and who isn't. Mm -hmm. But then equally, like, do you actually even like them? This is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I probably will still watch it. I, I'm quite sure. <laughs> <to help. laughs> anyway, I think we have, I think the answer is yes, we've reached peak. Yeah, very nice too. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much, girls. That was really fun. Next up, last week, all in the name of market research, of course, Lou and I visited Matches Fashion's incredible store at Five Carlos Place to explore the space and try on our picks for this season. Take a look. at Five Carlos Place, home to the Matches Fashion Townhouse, to have a look at some of their incredible pieces for the new season. Should we have a look? Let's go! Look at this space. Oh my god, it just looks incredible. There are so many things I already just want to touch. It's a real treat for the eyes, isn't it? We've been here before and the space looks completely different. I think every four weeks, 
they completely change what they have in source. So it's going to be something different every time you come. Immediately, I'm seeing so much shearling and so much tonal. There's a lot of browns coming through. There's a lot of earthy tones, aren't there? Yeah, there are a lot of really autumnal browns and creams. And yeah, shearling. Should we go and have a look at some of the rain? Okay, there? let's. So Ray is obviously Match's own brand and I have been so excited to see that finally in the flesh. It's so good. I've actually bought quite a lot from Ray so far this season. I've got a bit of an addiction to their sweatshirts. Yeah, they're great they're for like amazing. your everyday staples, but then you get a coat like this oh, and amazing. it just knocks it out of the park, doesn't that it? That is unreal. There's also a black one. Should we talk about them together? Yeah. I don't even know if I can lift this, you know, it's so <laughs> heavy. But have you ever seen a more incredible coat. Oh my god, what a statement. Yeah, it's so clever of Matches to have their own brand because it means that they can see what all the other brands are doing and yeah. then just fill the gap that you can't get elsewhere. It's just it's just amazing. Yeah, I love it. I think whilst we're on shilling, there's another coat on there that needs some attention. I think I'd sell everything I own to have this coat. This oh. is by Chloe. I mean, it's like their perfect mix of that really 70s look that they're so known yeah. for and something so classic. What? A forever piece. And that just looks like it was made for you. I think and it was. I, I think as well, like with shearling, obviously we were saying like, and a shearling coat in particular, that is a piece that will not go out of trend. Yeah. But if you've been umming and ahhing about it, I think now really is the time to make the investment because there's kind of depending on your style, but like even just those three, so true. they're so varied, aren't they? So true. What else? Um, well, I guess still with that sort of texture trend, I've got to pull this oh, twin set out. This is Gabriella Hurst. Just knits have just come so far that mm. it's not just a sweater. It can be so much more modern now. I so agree. And we, there's a lot of long high-heeled boots around. We're both wearing some yes, today. Yes, I love a knitted skirt and jumper combination with heel boots. It's such a good high-low balance for yeah. autumn, isn't it? And it's just so nice and thick. Yeah. Feel that. Just amazing. Oh. Well, there is one more coat that I want to look at. I think you should try this on because this is very you, but there's an Isabel Moron etoile. Yeah, I thought this is going to really go with my outfit. It's really going to go with your outfit. I mean, what a perfect oversized boyfriend coat for this season. It's got a really nice cocoon oversized shape, which means you can wear it over chunky knits, which is like the biggest problem with winter coats. Often, yes. And that will go over. Totally. Even the biggest And ones. the tab I was actually then wearing today, this is Isabel Moron from the collection as well. You don't have the bulky arms, so it's great. So I don't feel too yes. snug in here. There you go. That's your winning combo, a tabard and an oversized jacket. Yes. Love it. But great, just so easy to throw on. Like really, really lovely autumn colours. And again, this is just a piece that's going to last in your wardrobe. I think you it? need that. It's very, yeah. very you. Okay, if I must. Okay. I'm obsessed with this colour palette that yeah. they've curated here in the store. And I wouldn't think to add this brown with this burgundy with this mustard yellow. Yeah. But it's so work, so it's so good for some fresh inspiration. That is just amazing. This is Nilly Lotan, oh. which again is another one of my favourite designers. Mm. It is expensive, but I think that is like a work of art, it, isn't it? It's so, that, that is the most butter soft leather ever. This, I think, is the most beautiful colour velvet I've ever seen. It I is think stunning. It's so stunning. Obviously, Saint Laurent are known for their smoking jacket, like it's their thing, but this. I mean, it's almost like a rust burgundy. Yeah. It's incredible. I think you Ooh. can style this in so many ways. With there we go. With a satin trouser. There you go, Leo. I mean, what a combo. And look at those colours, just so sunny. But yeah, that, yeah. that jacket, that rich colour, yeah. that is going to work so hard in your wardrobe. And as you said, that is what matches are so good for. Yeah. Like these investment pieces, but they've still got so much character. They're not sort of plain and boring. They've got a little bit of something different, so haven't true. they? Oh, I just love that so much. So good. Wow. Amazing. Um, should we talk about tonal dressing quickly? Yes. Because I feel like there's a lot to be said for some of these really simple, beautiful neutrals. Yeah, like my eye immediately is going to these two. Those are just stunning. The colour of them just kind of looks like liquid gold, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. And then that then paired with that cream knit from Jill Sander. Yeah. That to me is such a gorgeous look. And then Lou throw on the oh my god! Coat. I mean, what an outfit. Just amazing. We've obviously hit the feminine end of the wall, haven't we? There's a lot of Simone Rocha yes. going on here, a lot of tulle, a lot, lot of Molly shoulders, a lot of bows. What immediately takes your fancy? Oh my god, I love the look of this Ooh. Prada blouse. How beautiful. I mean, That's amazing. talk about a, a kind of a classic silk shirt, but then such a statement with that amazing bow. Yeah, that with that red velvet blazer we just looked at. I mean, what? How like Diane Keaton. I yeah. just love it. So elegant. I think I would go with like high-waisted vinyl trousers, killer heels, a red lip, slick back hair. That's so cool. Big, big earrings. I think that is going to look so, so hot. 
I feel like you're going to want to talk about this. I'm going to pass you this dress. Yeah, I love this. Obviously, we've spoken about knitted twin sets, but knitted dresses are also having such a moment this season. This is actually really, really thick. Mm. Um, but I think if you've got a really good pair of knee-high boots, again, which both of us are sporting, mm. It's just such a chic look with the right accessories. Yep. You can really make these work so hard. This has also just caught my eye. Um, oh, sweet. Really pretty Simone Rocha cardigan. As Georgie often says, if she likes the cardigans, yes. I think this is what they would look like. Gorgeous. Yeah, she, God, she's so well known for this, her like, beautiful, pretty pearl mm. details. Um, and that is just gorgeous. I feel like you could really dress that up, dress that down. Okay, can we look at accessories now? Yes. I think we might be here a while. Why don't we collect some of our favourite shearling things and then we can talk about them all in one spot. Right, see you. See ya. I feel like we've got a really big selection here. We probably could have come here and just talked about shearling. I know. Fair. There's so many brands actually that have done it all at the same time, but this is a very prominent yeah. shoe, yeah. Um, which is the Prada Mule. Yeah. So if you're looking for something that's an unbelievably comfortable slipper-like yeah. piece of footwear, you can't really go wrong. And where do you sit in terms of house shoe going out? I know, right? I'm 100%. Sorry, you really the wrong you know the answer to that this. question. I am 100% on board with going out and all of these. First of all, if you're spending this kind of money, yeah. you're not you're not going to keep them just at home. But true, second true, of all, true. you know, there's so much good inspo out there. So many people are making these work outside with these, you know, a boyfriend leg jean, a big chunky cashmere sock. Yeah, I love that look. I think it's so cool. So I actually prefer a slightly more like delicate take, I think, on the trend with something like this. These are Valentino and I absolutely love these. Again, you said with a cashmere sock, with like one of those neutral looks, I just think it's so oh. cool. Um, there's also these, these are Balenciaga, kind of a similar style. This is probably like a happy medium between what yeah. both of us like. I like a slightly chunkier one, but yeah. this with a polished toe poking through, actually quite elegant. So great. There's also a black. And what they'll do is make any kind of very elegant, simple outfit, just feel a little bit more fashion and a little bit more on Completely. trend. So you can add it to your, you know, your cashmere jumper and your trousers yeah. and go. And also, we should give a little shout out. These are actually from the men's department, but oh, if you these. don't want to spend crazy money, then Birkenstock do do a version. There's a black pair as well. And there's, gotta... a, and there's a light grey, which I, I'm like really upset mm. that I don't own these because they're well, so me. They're very hard to find. So yeah. matchesfashion.com because I can't get my hands on them. Great. Another way you can go with shilling accessories mm. is bags. Yes. There is this from Saint Laurent, which that is, is amazing. absolutely incredible, isn't it? That is so beautiful. I feel like I keep repeating myself about forever pieces, but it's so true. It's something like this, it feels so on trend, but it's just classic enough that actually you will wear this for winter after winter. And it's also just unique, mm. you know. There are a lot of black crossbodies, leather crossbodies, and sometimes they can kind of start to feel yeah. the same. So if you want to add a little bit more personality, yeah. then this is great. So true. And also look, we're always going to be fans of black and navy in winter, yeah. but I think I think we're probably both going to come away from here today thinking we only want to wear cream and shearling and beige. 100%. This year. Another shilling bag I am absolutely loving this is, is this so from Naeus. Um, this kind of banana hammock yeah. shape banana hammock has um, has had a real resurgence. It was in the summer as well. There's yeah. a lot of kind of really slouchy leather styles, and I love this in the shilling. And I feel like it goes great with my. This is literally that plus your Isabel Morant jacket. I think we found your your yeah, look. See you later. Winter. I'm just walking straight out of here in a new wardrobe. It's so good. We've lined up a few of our favourite classic bags yes. now. There's some real goodies here, aren't there? Yeah, so many goodies. I mean, should we start with Bottega? Let's start with Bottega. Absolutely stunning. I think, you know, even if it was just like that, such a mm. gorgeous kind of classic bag, but the chain yeah. just makes it feel so much more elevated. I love how it looks like a briefcase. Yeah. I love that top handle. I love the flap. It just feels like such a fresh modern spin on quite a kind of... 80s, 90s look. I think it's stunning. Yeah, so the stunning. leather is just so yeah. soft as well. Beautiful. And then we've got to talk about the cassette bag. It's a brown that looks so good with black. And actually, it's quite a clever purchase because you can wear this with paler colours in spring and summer as well. So, yeah. so good. It's really great. And then another Bottega to shout out mm. is this one. Mm. Matches actually have the best selection yeah, of Bottega really bags. They do. Um, again, really good every day. Some people are unsure about buying a white bag in winter. Mm. I'm all for it. And it looks so good with what you're wearing today. I think, yeah, why not? Throw out the rule book. I think it looks great with neutrals. Let me just talk about this Gucci bag quickly as well, because this came out, I think, just in black, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. And I love this palette. The bulk color is actually a navy, and then it's mixed with, obviously, this brown and this 
and this camel colour. This with that Chloe shearling coat would be yeah. so good. Another throwback style is this from Chloe, which yeah. has got real vintage vibes. It's so ladylike. I it's got it. so much charm to it. And I just love the colour. It's like a real dusty mm. burgundy rose. Charm is such a nice way to describe that bag. It's exactly <laughs> what it has. And I agree, that dark rose, I think, is the colour. And it's so gorgeous. Again, I feel like we're going on about these colour palettes, but that with grey, that with yeah. camel, it all works so hard with so many different colours. It's beautiful. So we've seen a lot of product. I think it's only right that we try on a few things. Yes, let's go. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that as much as Lou and I did. Next up, our Worms Editor Tour takes us through a typical day in her life from the supplements she takes to what she has for lunch. No stone is unturned. Enjoy. Hi guys, I'm Tor. I'm Shilux's Wellness Editor and I'm here today in partnership with Lumity to tell you all about my Lumity journey. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lumity is the most amazing health and beauty brand and over the course of today, you're going to be spending the day with me and I'm going to show you the products in the range I am loving um, and tell you a little bit more about the brand. So one of the first things I do in the morning is take three capsules of Lumity's morning formula and this is without a doubt one of their standout products in the range and for very, very good reason. Um, and I take this in the morning because Lumity works with your circadian rhythm, which is how your body kind of functions throughout the day um, and it's important to take it in the morning so it can get to work where it's needed. I also love this product because it just ticks so so many health boxes whether you're looking for better energy levels, focus, sleep, bone health, immunity, skin, hair, nails, it really does tick so many boxes and I absolutely love that and knowing all, the, all that goodness is just in this one bottle is so fantastic. So I take three capsules of this um, and I take it before breakfast. There's a tiny bit of flaxseed oil in each capsule, which means you can take it on an empty stomach, which is so fantastic and means I never forget to take it as I leave it by my bedside table. So I have my three capsules here and my glass of water and I'm good to go for the day. So I just had a very quick shower and before I get going with my emails, I have to very quickly share the love for Lumity's Pro Ice Glow Roller. I can't tell you how much I love this product. As you can see, it's nice and frosty. This has been in my freezer overnight and it is the nicest thing to roll around your eyes and it is so nice if you're kind of prone to a bit of puffiness in the morning. It is so gorgeous. So another post-shower essential is Lumity's Body Oil, which is actually a brand new product um, for Lumity. And it comes in this beautiful, beautiful glass bottle, as you can see, which looks so nice on your bathroom shelf. Um, and a very handy pipette that makes applying the product so easy. And um, it's a blend of 32 different oils, which is amazing that it's, it's all packed into here, um, as well as some lovely essential oils that make it smell really zesty and refreshing and a perfect, perfect way to start the day. The body oil works particularly well after a bath or a shower and your skin is really kind of still warm. Um, so use it then to really, really reap the benefits. And I just love the dry oil texture. It really kind of sinks into the skin straight away and doesn't leave you feeling oily or greasy um, as you get dressed, which is so perfect. For breakfast, I have some oat bran, which I've soaked overnight in some kefir yogurt, which is a really yummy combo. And I've topped it with a pear um, and a bit of peanut butter for some healthy fats and a nice cup of coffee. And I'm gonna tackle my inbox. It is one o'clock already. The morning has absolutely flown by, which is usual at SL when the days um, are so busy. Um, but I'm taking advantage of this weather. The sun has made an appearance. So I'm gonna get some fresh air um, and catch up on the latest episode of my favorite wellness podcast. I recently moved down to the countryside, um, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm very lucky that this footpath is about 100 meters from my front door. So I need to make some lunch very quickly before I head back to my laptop. And I have lots of leftover green vegetables in the fridge. So I'm gonna have a bowl of these and top it with a little bit of mackerel and some avocado. So it's 3.30 and I'm just on a call with Charlotte and Sophie to discuss a couple of social ideas. Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So having been sat at my desk all day, um, I'm very ready to move my body um, and I'm gonna do a little bar workout before I settle down for the evening. So for my bar class, I've got a couple of resistance bands. One is slightly heavier, the black one's a bit heavier and the gray one's a bit lighter. I am just preparing my dinner and as you can see, I've got a lot of peppers to use up. So I'm gonna roast those uh, with some red onions and a bit of fresh thyme. I've got some salmon that I'm also gonna roast. Um, I just sprinkle that with a bit of soy sauce and lemon juice and pepper um, and also some grains. I absolutely love these grains. They're such a staple to have in the cupboard. A very delicious dinner. 
know which I'm looking forward to. While my dinner is cooking, I'm just taking out 20 minutes to chill out on the sofa to catch up with the Gilmore Girls. I mean, this is the best form of self-care if ever, ever there was. I absolutely love this show. No my day also wouldn't be complete without a bit of dark chocolate. I have dark chocolate every single day and this is my absolute favourite at the moment. So today has been a working from home day and for me one of the biggest treats about being at home is that I get to spend a bit longer on my skincare routine in the evening and I have been thinking about this moment all afternoon because I now get to use Lumity's incredible 4-in-1 cleanser um, as well as having their fantastic range of supplements. Lumity also has a lovely range um, of topical skincare and this cleanser is really really quite special. Um, as you can see from the colour of it it's very black it's because it contains activated charcoal um, it also contains sustainable jojoba beads which are really good to gently kind of exfoliate the skin um, dissolve impurities and really brighten and refresh so i've got here a little bit of the cleanser i'm going to warm it in my fingers and gently put it on my face honestly already i can feel it warming and it is like honestly the most relaxing thing it's not really an exfoliating cleanser because it's really really gentle um, but you can feel the beads gently working away just going to massage this in and then I'm just going to gently wash it off. So that is all washed off now. I can't tell you how soft and refreshed my skin feels. And I think, you know, it, it's exfoliating, but it's so gentle. I think all those nutrients, the botanicals really help to nourish your skin and just leave it feeling really kind of glowy and happy, which I love. Winter evenings were quite literally made for a nice warm bath. And now that my skincare is done, I'm really looking forward to having a nice relaxing soak in the bath. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to take two capsules of Lumity's Restful Nights Booster. Um, this is an amazing product to take alongside Lumity's Hero Supplements. Um, it contains amazing ingredients such as magnesium um, and holy basil, which really help you to switch off after a busy day and calm a busy mind. It has been a very busy and productive day, um, but before I hit the pillow, the final thing I need to do is get my nightly dose of Luma Tea, and that is in the form of Luma Tea's night. I need to take three of these, like in the morning, um, and like the morning formula, the night formula works in line with the body's circadian rhythm to really restore and replenish the body as you sleep. So it's, again, another incredible product from Luma Tea. Um, but before I go and get into bed, I want to let you know that you can get 10% off the entire Luma Tea collection. That's the skincare, the hero supplements, and the boosters until the end of November by using the code FEELGOOD. 10 at checkout um, please do get involved they really are such an amazing amazing brand um, and I really hope you love the products as much as I do see you soon thank you Tor I love that such a treat to get the proper insight into that glow now earlier this month Georgie met two really amazing women who are at the forefront of the fight against breast cancer this is such an informative discussion one you really won't want to miss as you will no doubt be aware, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and at Sherlux, this is a cause that we feel very passionately about, especially because the current statistics are that one in seven of us will be diagnosed with the disease in our lifetime. Today, I'm joined by two women who are aiding the fight and treatment of breast cancer and cancer in general. Welcome, Dr. Melissa Phillips and Kelly McCabe. Lovely to have you. Thank you very much for um, having us. Thank you for joining me. We're going to come on, Kelly, you're going to come in, in a moment. We're going to talk to Melissa first about breast cancer. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we've done lots about checking, you know, over the years. And we want to do something a little bit different this year and actually talk to somebody. I mean, you're a consultant oncologist. You are really in the thick of it and talk to somebody who's like dealing with this every day and just hopefully really hammer at home how cautious people ought to be, how we've got to be having those checks, etc, etc. Um, those stats are quite terrifying, one seven. They are, they are terrifying. I mean, I think um, I obviously am a oncologist who specialises in breast cancer. This is what I do. This is what I see every day. I think it's really important, though, not to overemphasise the scary stats, but to also emphasise the fact that this is a very curable cancer. So mm. yes, it is the most common cancer in women in the UK. Yes, one in seven of us are going to get breast cancer at some point in our lifetime. Those are the statistics. However, 85% of breast cancer is curable. And I think what's really important is the earlier we catch it, the earlier we find it, or the earlier women present, the more likely we are to be able to cure it. We're getting better and better at doing it. And um, 
more and more women are living after breast cancer uh, and living very well after breast cancer. So. When should you start to get checked? Um, is, is there an age? Is it down to your genes? Is it down to family history? In terms of NHS screening, screening at the moment starts at the age of 50 and it's three yearly mammograms uh, and that is until you are 70. We are, that is currently being reviewed, it is very likely that that age will come down, so it will mm. go to 47 up to 73, and that is a, it's a very fluid changing situation. At the moment, as it stands, it's 50. I believe very strongly, though, that, that women should start being self-aware at a much earlier stage than that. Um, yes, this is a disease associated with age, so you are more likely to get breast cancer the older you get. So 80% of breast cancers are in women over 50, hence the screening age. Really, that many? That many. However, we do see it in younger women, and the, as we've said, the earlier you find it, the, the better. So the most important thing is to be breast aware. And it's not so much about self-examination, actually. It's, it's just being about... Um, being aware of your, your, your body shape, your own breasts, and, and so that you will notice if there's a difference. Um, the main advice we give is, is to, if you know your body, if there's any change, so any new lump or swelling in the breast or, or under the arm, uh, it's very important to have that checked. But it can also be if, there's, if the skin goes red or there's a rash on the skin or there is puckering of the skin where it looks a bit like a, almost like a, a peeled orange look over the skin. So lots of different changes that really only you as a woman will know is different in, mm. in your breast. Any of those changes, anything you're concerned about, the most important thing to do is then go to your GP. In terms of checking oneself, I mean, we've all seen pictures of lemons and I mean, there's lots of <laughs> videos of men checking yeah. themselves and all sorts of things. Um, is there, should you, from the age of 25, be checking? Is there an age where you should be checking yourself? And is it monthly? How often? It's, so there is no specific age. It's, it's too arbitrary to give an age. I think, in okay. general, once women um, have, have gone through puberty, are going into adult life, they need to be more aware of their own bodies. It is not something that women should get anxious about in their teens or early 20s. It is more likely as you get older. But if you are aware of your, yourself and you're aware of your breasts, then you can be checking. And, and they generally say monthly because breasts will change through the month as well. Okay. So through a monthly cycle, you will notice changes in your breast tissue. As for mammograms, screening, NHS is 50, you're saying might drop to 47. In an ideal world, would you do it from, you know, if there was endless budget? Yeah. What age would you start screening from? If there was endless budget, you would bring it down into the 40s, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, like, we talk about it being in one's genes. And my grandmother had breast cancer. Am I more likely to get it? Does it tend to skip generations? Are there patterns? I mean, is it genetic, first of all? It is... In, in a very small percentage of patients, there is a hereditary genetic component. Mm -hmm. So breast cancer, if you have breast cancer, there is about 5 to 10% chance it will be. So the majority of breast cancers are spontaneous. That's also very important. Um, yes, you have a higher risk if you have a strong family history. So um, if you are concerned and you do have a strong family history, have a family history, I recommend people go to see their GP. There are genetics clinics. Uh, locally around, around the country that patients can uh, or women can can go to or be referred to if they have strong family history but the mutations that a lot of people are aware of are, are brca1 and 2 so braca1 and 2 it is it is much more likely you do not carry that than you do carry that okay. it is about five to seven ten percent of patients with breast cancer we hear about these stages a lot can you give us a sort of quick dummies guide to what those stages mean. So firstly, people often get confused. Staging and grading is very different. The grade is looking at the cell type and how quickly that cell is growing. The stage is where the cancer is at that time. So it's two very, very separate ways in which uh, we look at the cancer. Uh, early stage or, or curative stage is stage one to three. So the, it, and that is based on the size of the tumor. Uh, that is in the breast and whether it has gone to the local lymph nodes, but it is all classed stage one to three as local disease that is treated with radical or curative intent. Stage four is the stage where the cancer has gone outside of the breast to a distant site. So breast cancer can go to distant 
organs or nodes that make it therefore no longer treatable with curative intent because it has gone outside the local region that can be surgically removed. Uh, and breast cancer cells tend to have a propensity to go to organs such as liver, lung, bone, brain, uh, and lymph nodes within, within the area between the heart and lungs. And those are common sites. And if the cancer has spread, that is stage four disease, and that changes the management. That means it's no longer a short, sharp burst of intense radical treatment. It's about long-term treatment. It's about disease control, uh, and that is usually lifelong to some extent. It's a very small percentage of patients that present with stage four disease. So you're looking at sort of 10, 15% absolute max. Okay. And as you say, 85% chance of yeah. survival. So, um, in terms of the treatment for sort of stage one to three, what what a radio chemo? Yeah, absolutely, surgery. absolutely. So, um, breast cancer is a huge umbrella term. Uh, yeah, so much fits under that umbrella. Uh, there are lots of different subtypes, and and uh, the main ones that we look at. So we split it really into three at the moment, but I still think there's much more to it. But but for for these purposes, we look at. Firstly, is it hormone sensitive? The most common type of breast cancer is hormone sensitive. Um, and actually many women with hormone sensitive breast cancer can avoid chemotherapy and have surgery, radiotherapy and targeted endocrine therapy to remove the, the estrogen from the body that is being used by the cancer to grow. So we have hormone sensitive, we have a triple positive cancer, which is hormone driven and also driven by a, a, a pathway, a growth factor pathway called HER2, or we have triple negative, which means the cancer is not, have, it doesn't have any target that we can use, it is just a mutated cell. And it is the, 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 the HER2 positive and the triple negative cancers that usually require chemotherapy as well as surgery and radiotherapy. The NHS provides all of this, right? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Amazing. The NHS provides it all. And we also, within the NHS, are very lucky to have clinical trials running too. So you can have, um, in many cases, the options of standard of care, which is excellent, and also trials available to look at whether new drugs can be combined with standard of care to improve standard of care over over time. And I know you've recently conducted some trials which have been very successful. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, we're, we're very lucky where we are. We do get to, to um, participate in many clinical studies. And you're at Bart's. And I'm at Bart's. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, thank you. It, it's, it's good to hear that it's not all doom and gloom um, because you, we do hear, you know, it's talked about, especially at the stage of life I am, where it's talked absolutely. about a lot and it suddenly feels very real scary and yeah very real and like it's you can almost touch it it's everywhere yeah. when we came to you and said would you come on the show would you talk about breast cancer you said yes of course um and i really want you to know and to talk about percy health and kelly welcome lovely to have you Thank too you. Kelly, you've mm -hmm. been involved in cancer hospitals uh, and that's your background yes. um you've then seen this gap in the market to support patients who've gone through their treatment come out the other side and then say, what do I eat? What do I do now? Yeah. I mean, what is the elevator pitch? Sounds quite businessy, doesn't it, for a, a sort of cancer support um, clinic. But yeah, just so people really understand what you're offering, what is Percy Health? Yeah, of course. What we saw, having worked with hundreds of cancer patients and in cancer centres my whole career, is that the treatment side is really well managed. But there is this point at the end of treatment where people like particularly describe it as falling off a, a cliff edge you know you have all of this support around you and then that drops away your family think things are going really well and you've done brilliantly and then you have to start thinking about perhaps going back to work looking after your family or your other commitments and you start to have questions around fear of recurrence and the anxiety you feel when you have scans and appointments what should I be eating it did anything I eat perhaps cause my cancer or mm. how can I improve my diet what do I do about my hair loss, my skin changes? Um, Melissa described the hormone therapies that, that women might stay on for five to 10 years. They cause menopausal effects, so skin changes, changes to your uh, sex drive and, uh, you know, and, and pain perhaps during sex. So all of this is not well covered. And so what Percy Health is, it's a virtual care clinic. So it's an online destination where you can access 20 different disciplines all focused on recovery, rehabilitation, and just improving your quality of life. So people like nutritionists, dietitians, physiotherapists, sexual therapists, 
menopause practitioners, we've got yoga instructors, uh, Pilates instructors, meditation, mindfulness. So really the, the full array of different services that you would need yeah. depending on, on, on what you're experiencing and what you want support with. And I, I think this is, I mean, I love a stat, but you know, it puts it into perspective. There are 600,000 people alive in the UK right now who've gone through cancer treatment, whose life yeah. has changed forever and who are forever living in fear of it returning Absolutely. and want yeah. to make huge changes, yeah. you know, mentally who've been through the ringer and... Imagine you know, the emotional and psychological impact that has on somebody who's been through that and, and has to live with that. You know, the positive is they are living mm. with it, uh, and, and out the other side, but the, the psychological uh, repercussions of that are huge. Um, mm. and, I, and I also think, you know, from, with what Kelly's doing, you know, there are patients that come to clinic and they say to me, I feel embarrassed to say, that I'm worried about losing my hair and is it going to come mm. back? I'm worried about how I will look after yeah, this like without my breast. You yeah. shouldn't have I shouldn't right worry. Yeah, that. yeah, isn't that awful that I worry about that when I'm being cured of cancer? And I said, no, that, you know, these are really important things for people. They're, this is their identity and, and to be able to have a service where you can go to and, and not feel embarrassed that this yeah. is something that yeah. you're worried about, I think is, is hugely beneficial. Yeah, and it's amazing you yeah. as consultant oncologist really seeing the need for this because you're obviously very medical and yes. absolutely scientific yeah. but yeah you see the need <laughs> yeah. for support and I think it's worth pointing out isn't it that mm. you're really supported by leading oncologists yes. in the field they're really behind what you're doing yeah so our, our medical director which is how Melissa and I uh, were introduced actually our medical director is Professor Peter Schmid he runs the cancer centre at Barts Hospital um, and all of our investment to date has been raised through oncologists and cancer surgeons so it shows that, like Melissa, you know, there are a lot of people in that community who recognise that more needs to be done at yeah. the end of end of treatment. Um, and some of it, you're right, it's, it is non-medical care. So it could be speaking to a hair and image advisor, um, but it really impacts your medical uh, care, the confidence that you have in your mm. medical treatment and, and how likely you are to kind of do well and feel yeah. well after treatment. So mm. it's, it's non-medical, but it's very supportive of the medical mm. treatment itself. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. And it's for all people who've gone through cancer treatment, not yeah. just people who've gone through breast cancer, but you do have lots of support for people who've gone through breast cancer. Yes. Um, you can find out more at percyhealth.com. Thank you both so much. Um, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so, I mean, we all know someone who's been touched by this. Um, so hopefully that is helpful. For more information on breast cancer, visit NHS. Dot UK. Thank you both so much for joining us. Welcome back for more information on the ladies behind that really important conversation. Please do take a look at the show notes below. Now, next up, influencer and makeup guru Emma Roberts is creating the most gorgeous daytime look with products from affordable brand Beauty Pie. Take a look. <laughs> fever on Instagram and I have been getting to know the beauty brand Beauty Pie in detail. So today I'm going to share more about who the brand is, what their offering is, and some of my favorite beauty products from their range. So Beauty Pie is the world's first ever membership club for beauty lovers. So members get access to high performance skincare and luxury products from the world's leading beauty labs without paying for the middleman and those high retailer markups. Okay, on to the skincare routine. So I've just washed my face with their Japan Fusion Transforming Cleanser. It's gonna get rid of any makeup, any dirt, impurities on the face and give you a really radiant and clean base for the rest of your skincare products. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with my Skin Mist. This is their Triple Hyaluronic Acid Dewy and Plumping Skin Mist. Um, this is something that's just gonna prep your face for the rest of your products. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with the Triple Hyaluronic Acid Peptide Serum. Um, this has three weights of hyaluronic acid, so it's gonna completely plump your skin. And now I'm going to go in with the THA Elastic Lifting Eye Serum. So this is, I have to say, this is my favorite skincare line from the brand because it's just ultra, ultra hydrating. And then I'm just going to dab all around the eye contour area. 
Okay, next I'm gonna go in with the Pure Oxygen Radiant Glow Infusion Moisturizer. This one is such a dream. I have been using this day and night. It's gonna infuse your face with pure oxygen, but also vitamin C, so it's gonna brighten your skin. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the Wonder Filter Brightening Primer. It's lightweight, it's color correcting, and it leaves a really nice natural glowiness to the skin. Now I'm gonna go in with the Super Luminous Under Eye Genius. Ladies, this is for the moms out there. We are tired. So this is gonna instantly lift you up and make you feel alive again. Okay, so I'm gonna use my angled contour brush um, and just dab a little bit. It really brightens the eye area. Then I also like to do a little dab just like over my lids to get it ready for eyeshadow. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the Sheer Tinted Oil-Free SPF 20. This is a, such a dream. It's really natural. Um, it's also gonna protect your skin with SPF 20. And I like to use my hands just to like get that really natural sort of face. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the Super Brow Shaping Pencil. This is a great pencil because it's double-sided and I like to just mimic kind of little hairs and just fill in where I kind of have those sparse places. And then I'm gonna go in with the other side and just brush up. Okay, next, this has to be one of my favorite products from the Beauty Pie range. This is One Palette Wonder, and it, it has everything in one place. Okay, so because I typically do my makeup fast, I'm running around with a toddler at home, I'm actually gonna go and take the two darker eyeshadows in the palette and I'm gonna just mix them together a little bit and then I'm just gonna kind of get all into the the lid and then really work it into the crease I feel like that's where the sort of magic happens with eyeshadow I'll go in with the darker color and the other side of my brush um, and I'll work in some shadow just really close to the water lash line Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Beauty Pie's Flash False Lash Mascara. Mascara is literally my holy grail makeup product. So we're just gonna go to town. I'm gonna go in with the bronzer and I'm gonna start with my cheekbones and I like to do almost like a backwards three. So taking it up from my forehead, around and then down to the jawline. I'm gonna use the highlight. I love a highlight. I feel like it brings the whole look together and really accentuates the features that you want to kind of bring out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my cheekbones and just kind of touch up each side there. I also love to use a little along my nose and on the sort of point of my nose and then kind of blend it with my fingers. A little on my cupid's bow and then i like to bring a little down to my chin too i'm also going to do a little in the arches of my eyebrow just to kind of define that arch i have been gushing over this lipstick from beauty pie it's called future lipstick matte and this is shade all day long and i like this matte too because it's lightweight it's not super drying and it's like the, the perfect shade for day or for night. Okay, so as an option, this is a product I'm obsessed with. This is the Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil in shade Sun Hazed. I love this product. I'm actually gonna put it over my lipstick. Okay, last but not least, we need something to set our makeup. So this is the Fresh Glow Breathable Setting Spray from Beauty Pie. I love this product. Okay guys, that is all from me. Head on over to beautypie.com and join Beauty Pie Plus using the exclusive offer for Sheer Lux readers on their annual membership and go peruse their beauty range for yourself. I can't wait for you guys to get hooked like me.
So that's it for today. Thank you so much to Melissa, Kelly, Emma, and of course, Tor, Lou, and Sherry. On the next show, we have some more fab content for you with all the cool brands you need to know right now. High Street unboxing with Polly, some more beauty with a gorgeous party look, plus lots more. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Bye-bye.